With light rain falling here at UFCU Dishbalk Field, it's the third and final game of this three-game set between the Kansas Jayhawks and the Texas Longhorns. Let's quickly take a look at the Big 12 standings. Through last night's game, Texas still setting in third place in the Big 12. Kansas winning one of two yesterday and proves to three and seven. Yesterday was an interesting day when you look at the ball games. We had 17 runs scored by Kansas in the double hitter, and they split the series. Texas never trailed in game two. They scored four in the first. It was a frantic comeback at the end, and Texas held on. But today in game three, Ty Colbert, who leads the Big 12 with six victories on the mound for Texas. Good afternoon, everybody. Keep going along with Greg Swindell. And Zeke, when you looked at what we saw yesterday, the difference in the ball games, either basically for both teams, was the extra base hit. Yeah, you talk about it all the time. Extra base hits, it's easier to score runs when you, you got a runner on second, you hit one to the wall, he's gonna score easy. Runners on first can score by extra base hits. Well, both teams yesterday just put out an extra base hit explosion. We had triples, doubles, and a couple of home runs by Texas, and so it's just a lot easier to get runs across the plate when you do get the extra base hits. Well, Texas has found a way to score some runs. They did held, held on to the second game yesterday, but the momentum, folks, in this series seemed to be on Kansas side, especially as the ball game ended yesterday. Yeah, especially, and Texas won the game, but they won with the bases loaded and got a double play to end the game. Before that, Kansas had scored some runs, so I think the momentum is over there. They scored a lot of runs yesterday. It's gonna be a, a great game today. Maybe we'll see the off offensive explosion again. Well, we don't know what we're going to see. Kansas had only won one ball game away from their home ballpark until they won game one yesterday in that double hitter. They're trying to win their first series on the road this season. And Richie Price in his 14th year as the head coach. I love to watch this guy coach. He is up and down the dugout. He is very involved in everything that goes on. He's got a great attitude and his lineup looks like this for game three. From top to bottom, it is about as good as we've seen Kansas in a while, except for one thing. They don't hit the ball in the ballpark, but they've got some guys that swing the bat, especially Michael Tinsley in the middle. Michael Tinsley had a really good day yesterday in the doubleheader. Six for nine in that doubleheader, catching all 17 innings. And also today will be in right field for the Kansas Jayhawks facing Ty Culbreth, the senior from Bryan, Texas. Leads the Big 12 and wins, making his ninth start. Like that walks, only eight walks in 53 in the third innings. Ty Colbert is around the plate. Mr. Steady, we call him. Really good numbers. And today against the Kansas Jayhawks, get quick outs. Get the ball around the plate. I think teams know that Ty's going to be around the plate. Make quality pitches early. Get those quick outs. Command the fastball. Ty's been really good when he can command it both sides of the plate and pitch deep into this ball game. I mean, yep. Texas used a lot of pitching yesterday and the starting pitching in the second half is gonna have to start pitching deeper. Yeah, and it, it's an interesting day. We, we don't know how much we're gonna get in, folks. It, it has been raining off and on since about noon here, Central Times in Austin, Texas. It, it's been a, a sometimes a little heavier than others. We're expecting scattered showers throughout the afternoon and they will try to get five in. Right now, we haven't had any lightning. That's what no. separates everything. That will stop play right now. It's just a lot of moisture coming down. The ball will be slick. It will be a factor defensively for both of these clubs. Well, sure. On this turf, the field never gets covered, only the mound because it's dirt. So the field, it drains good, but when there's a steady mist or steady rain, it, it can, ball can really skip off this AstroTurf. Balls that are hit firmly to the infielders can get on you very quick. How about sliding? It is oh, interesting you to be watch careful. slides. You'll see guys overslide bags today. It is very slick. Both teams did get the opportunity to take BP. Both teams were able to take infield. And we're going to about to get this started with Joe Mahoney stepping in against Ty Colbrook, and we're underway. I think quick outs, I think, and your keys, looking at your keys, Greg, for Ty, I think for me, when he gets those outs in like three pitches and gets an out, pitches to contact, I think he's more effective. Yeah, the strikeouts, they'll, they'll come for Ty Colbert. He's third in the Big 12 with 50. But, yeah, the quick outs, you, you keep the ball around the plate, which he's going to do, only the eight walks on the year. Good change there. Had him swinging over the top of it. 
Quick outs on, on days like this. They keep your defense alert, keep them on their toes. Yeah, because guys are getting wet. I mean, they're rubbing the brim of their hat. Uh, they're trying to keep their hand dry where they can throw it across the infield. So it's a day not fun to be out to play defense right now. Moroni did a nice job last night of, of swinging the bat in the double hitter. The other thing is seeing pitches. Comes up with a base hit right here. He saw a ton of pitches right last night. That's the 14th consecutive game that he's reached base. Doing his job in the leadoff spot for the Jayhawks. First batter of the game. Tress wanted that ball, fastball in and Ty leaves it up out over the plate. The Diachuk steps in. Ryan from Richmond, British Columbia. He's a senior. Good bunt up the first baseline. Colbert will get it. <laughs> Flips it to first without his hand. It's playing a game that happens. I sort of chuckle because before the games, you see a lot of players play a game called flip, where they flip the ball from glove to glove. And that's exactly what Ty did right there. Yeah. Don't actually agree with it. He had plenty of time right there to go to his hand. What if the ball gets stuck there in the webbing or flips it too high or something? Fortunately for Ty in Texas, it comes out good and gets the out. Maybe if you had to do it quicker, but he had plenty of time right there. McLaughlin will step in. Sophomore from San Jose, 6'290 pounder. In there for a strike. I think the lead will be important for both of these clubs. You just don't know when the rain will actually, I mean, it's supposed to be what six or seven inches in the next couple of days here so getting a lead and keeping it early in this ball game will be important well you, you look at that too because you know once we get to five innings it's official the o2 tried to get him to chase upstairs he did not This is an all synthetic turf field here at UFCU Dishfog Field. The only place, Greg, is the mound that you really have to worry about diamond dust and keeping dry. And they will come out, I'm sure, multiple times today. There goes the runner. And actually had brought Cody Clements right to the bag, and he almost had a chance to make a play. The ball was foul, but Joe Baker will come in now and talk to Ty. Just give him, give him different looks. We saw Maroney. Last night, attempt third base late in the ball game. You have to always vary your looks out there to second base. Good base runners will figure out, figure out that you're, you're either looking once or looking twice or not looking at all. He had that bag stolen easily. Yes, he did. Fortunately for Texas, it was, pitch was foul. Hit ten, foul. 10 for 28 are the Jayhawks with runners in scoring position in the series so far. Matt, two for nine in the series. He's driven in a run, scored a run. <laughs> Off of the fist. Baker has it in time. Advancing to third, but two outs in the inning. Dangerous customer coming to the plate right now. Matt, Michael Tinsley, six for nine in yesterday's double hitter. He scored five times. He doubled and he drove in two. Kansas did a really good job yesterday of driving in runs with two outs. Fair ball. Clements has it in time across the diamond. Colbert pitches out of a leadoff base hit. And Texas comes to bat in the bottom of the first. Nice job of finding, not umpiring, making the play. 
Augie Garrido in his 20th season as the head coach here at the University of Texas. Texas is currently third in the Big 12 with a six and five record, trying to win this series at home. And his lineup looks very much like it did in last night's second game. Joe Baker at short. Joe Baker DH'd in game one yesterday. They got him into the lineup again. It's good to have him back in the lineup. The other guy for me, down at the bottom, Tyler Rand has done a nice job swinging the bat. And he's coming on here at, in his freshman campaign. Well, he's swinging the bat good, and he's also, when he when he's on base, he's a threat because he's fasting, a steal bases, and score runs. They're gonna try to score those runs against Jackson Goddard, Kansas freshman, big man, 6'5", from Tulsa, Oklahoma. He's had a season high, six and third innings earlier this year against St. Louis, his ninth start. He's pitched in relief as well. 19 walks in 36 innings. Keys for Jackson today. He must command his off speed. He's had struggles with that this year. The three picks Mitch and pitch and stick with his plan. Go out there and stay with it regardless of what's going to happen. I think the, the key when you talk to Coach Price, he told me, hey, he's got some good stuff. We're, we're really excited about his future. He has just had a tough time. Pitching ahead in the count. Keeping the ball in the strike zone. You hear it a lot with young pitchers. He has a high ceiling. I mean, the potential's there, but we all know about potential. They're just waiting for it to Sometimes show on the field. Potential as a coach gets you fired. Right. <laughs> Good pitch there to Travis. He's had a good series, four for six in last night's doubleheader. Scored three times, doubled, drove in a couple. It's been an offensive series for both of these clubs. Both of these teams would like to bottle up yesterday, take them to next series and the next series, Kansas. rest of the year. Kansas scored 17, Texas scored 13. Split. The double hitter. It almost looks like when a, a young man, and he's still young, true freshman, like he guided that ball, like he was trying to guide it in there for a strike. Does that happen to you sometimes when you know that you're having a tough time getting the ball in the strike zone? Yeah, first inning of games, especially. I mean, he's pitching in Austin for the first time as a freshman, a true freshman. So I'm sure there's some nerves in there. It might take an, an inning before he really gets the feel for it. Or his first out. That could even happen as well. Lead off walk for Jones. Cody Clements steps in. Cody, four for eight. With a triple. Excuse me, he was two for nine. Bunts this ball up the first baseline. Does a nice job right there. When you have two Clements in the lineup, you're trying to figure out which the, one. The other one had the triple. <laughs> yes, he did. A sacrifice, one three on the put out. So the bottom of the first looks just like the top of the first. So far. Barrera steps in. He hit a mammoth shot, one of the farthest I've seen in this ballpark. I've caught an awful lot of games here, played here, See, I saw you I play. Kid, here. I kid you not. I, just, I gave up plenty of, of, of those as well, but that was the furthest one I think I've seen hit. It's a monster shot, folks, into the trees, into the darkness of the night last night. In game two. Old bat, BB core bat, any bat. That ball was way out. I'd, I'd, I'd put it in the range of 400 and minimum 450 feet, but that's that's me. Side step move. Almost worked yesterday for Kansas. Ben Kraut, if he'd have thrown it initially, he would have got Travis Jones. Texas 9 for 24 with runners in scoring position. In the series. Folks, this is a big fly. You be the judge. I mean, there is a no where, doubt. Where is it? It's gone. I it's mean, you can't even see it. Well, we. 
We know it hit into that tree right there, down the left field line. And you can see the big tree down the left field right now. And I'm just telling you, that's a minimum of 450 feet. The 2 0. I got upstairs. I got some friends that hang out there in left field, and I text Mark Pinion. I said, Did that go over the tree? And he texts back the picture of the ball, and he said, Yes, it did. And that, that tree is across the street. Mammoth, mammoth shot. Green light right here, I would think, for Barrera on the 3 0 pitch. See what happens. Take it all the way. Eighteen total in his career is a longhorn at this point. That total will go up. Looking for something off speed, pitch in there for a strike. And it's a full count. I'm not sure what he was looking for. He had to be looking for something off speed. That was right down Broadway. Might get that off speed here at three two. Jones at second, just underway here on a rainy afternoon in Austin, Texas. Upstairs, second walk of the inning. And for most of the season, Pitching coach Skip Johnson had been coaching third, but Texas switched it up. I believe last week at Kansas State, Tommy Nicholson back down there in the third base coach's box. Ryan Russ over at first. Casey Clement steps in. And Russ. He's had a good series, four for eight. Triple, drove in two, scored one. Into right. Jones on his way to the plate. Here comes the throw to the plate. Not in time. On his way to third is Barrera. One nothing, Texas. Good job by Casey. Jumping on the first pitch. Daughter had been a little wild this first inning, but Casey jumps on it. The right fielder, I was looking and going, I don't know about sending him right here, because there's a catcher playing right field. Got to be a pretty good arm. Throw was on line, but Travis, all 6'4 of him, you see how far he slid right there. He slid all the way out of the catcher's circle after he went by the plate. You can see that uniform quite wet when he gets up. Clements drives in his second run of the series. Actually, it's his third run of the series. But by missing the cutoff man, it allowed Barrera to get to third. And with, with that hit, Casey is not going to let younger brother show him up. I believe that tied him pretty much in every category on the season. Look at the numbers right there right now. Casey has one more run, one more RBI now. But they're tied in hits, tied in homers. It's been quite a battle. He wasn't going to let little brother show him up. That's exactly right. Patrick Mathis will step in. Conversation is over. You walk to give up a hit. Texas with a lead. Boy, they have played well early as Texas in this series. They have outscored Kansas now 12 to 4 in the first four innings. Was changes late in the game. No, no, <laughs> a that, little those bit. numbers go the other way for Kansas after the fifth. But especially on a day like today, to jump out to an early lead it's starting to rain again it's not really a heavy rain it's kind of a, a heavy mist is that what you'd call it yep Mathis two for seven in the series he scored a couple runs he's doubled Looking for his first RBI of the series When it becomes bothersome, though, is when your helmet, your bat start to get wet as a hitter. Now, I'm sure as a pitcher, there's a lot of things that are bothersome when it's you've got moisture coming down. But 
As a pitcher, you just you try to keep keep your pitching hand like hidden so you just, close as you can to your body with a closed fist. And usually the ball will be in your glove. That way it won't get wet as it's raining. Activity already starting to commence in the Kansas bullpen. Back out of play. I believe that's Hayden Edwards warming in the Kansas bullpen. The 2 2. Breaker ball gets away. Guerrero sprints to the plate and scores. It's 2 0 Texas. One of the keys was commanding that off speed pitch. He's struggling with it here in the first inning and struggles with it right here. Just throws it down in the dirt and it's going to take a different different hop even from the pitcher to the catcher off that wet turf stayed down. Tanner Gregg in behind the plate. Was that a dab slide? It was a dab slide. <laughs> it's creative. The payoff on the ground. Wright has it. First in time moving up. It's Clements to third. That brings Zane Gerwitz to the plate. Gerwitz, major part of last night's ball game in the first inning. He had a three-run homer. Well, he separated the it. game. It was a one-nothing game at that time. He made it four-nothing with one swing of the bat. Hit out there to the right of 375, just under the scoreboard. Hits the outside corner, 20th pitch of the ball game for Goddard. Nice job right there to keep that ball in front. Again, when it's wet, the ball's going to scoot off when you're blocking because it's all synthetic. Now, there's no dirt around home plate, so. You have to stay down. You have to stay down because it will scoot rather than come up as it normally would. Nice job again of keeping that ball in front. Tanner Gregg back there behind the plate saying, wait a minute, I watched 17 innings yesterday and there weren't this many in the dirt. What's going on here? Yeah, Michael Tinsley in right field right there. <laughs> Caught all 17 of those innings. One and two. Knocked it down. Not far enough away for Clements to score. Count remains two and two. Actually would be 17 and a half innings. Nine. Yeah, and because he caught eight and a half. There was there was no bottom of the nine. He caught nine and he caught eight. Seventeen. Oh, he did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trick myself. The two-two. On the ground, tough play, backing up. Padilla checks, long throw, not in time. Gerwitz using his good speed drives in a run. I think that's a base hit. But I, Chuck, when he backed up, you knew he had trouble. He backed up. Backed up on the ball and had to throw it. Not on balance. You see right here. Gets it and just doesn't get a good grip on it. Well, possibly wet again and just offline. Well, I've already written down a base hit. Because I think that's what that is. Yes, it is. And an RBI. So Texas again jumping out to a 3 nothing lead here early. That's Joe Baker. Sophomore from McKinney. Good bunt up the line. Throw across. That's again, that's the weather. Here comes Gerwitz rounding third. He'll be held there by Tommy Nicholson. Podiachuk had it in time, but I think the ball was wet. Yeah, there was plenty of time to make a good throw. Again, offline. Joe's surprising right there. You see, just didn't look like he had a grip on it. Looked like he might have 
mishandled it. Nonetheless, a wild throw to first by Podiachuk. Tinsley in right field alertly backs up and holds Zane to the third base. Michael Cantu, the D8, steps in. Cantu, two for seven in the series. He's driven in a run and scored a run. You see Goddard going to the rosin bag. Really, I mean, with the rain, because it's starting again, the top of the rosin bag is going to be wet. So you have to get up Go underneath, underneath the, the rosin bag. It's coming down as hard now as we've seen it in a while. Poncho is coming out for the fans. You can see the rosin bag. That's a nice, smart, intelligent move. Put it on the cleat scraper. Still going to be wet on one side. You got to keep it that way. Yeah. Got to keep putting it on the, the dry side down. I need a new one every time I go out. Coming down much harder now. One and one to Cantu. Fly ball's not easy to catch. I know that right now, the, the, what rain it is, is coming straight down. So as you look up for the fly ball, it's, it's not coming sideways. It's coming right in your face. Goes back to the rosin bag. Texas has scored in all three games. Eight total runs early in the game. We told you how good Texas has been in the first four innings offensively. Kansas has had their offense after the fourth. Way upstairs. Rain. And the slickness obviously affecting Jackson Goddard right now. It's one thing you don't want to do is try to throw it harder and the ball really slip out, go to the backstop. And as it continues to rain, the, the worst part about this is your footing on, on the, the dirt. Your cleats start to get heavy with the dirt caking in on them. Watching his feet right now. I don't see his feet really slipping, but the ball's not coming out of his hands. You can see, though, it's starting to cake up. Cake up. They do have the, the thing behind the, the mound there. It's, a, it's got little rubber spikes on it, and you can go kick that. They have, they have the old tongue depressors that they put tape around, and you can get in there and dig with them. Got all of it out there. They got them all. Tyler Rand steps in. Tyler's done a nice job. He's three for eight in this series. He's got two doubles. He scored one. He's driven in one. Chance to blow this thing wide open here in the first. Ninth batter of the inning for Texas. There for strike one as a hitter. This is when that water starts to come off the top of your helmet. This, you can see Rand shook his head there. Keep it from coming off. I always felt that I wanted to try to get my bat dry, too, mm -hmm. just because I wouldn't want the ball to slip off of it. Upstairs, and it's one and one. You just don't want the rain to drip at the wrong time as the pitch is coming. Yep. Good pitch right at the bottom of the zone. And it's one and two to Rand. Gerwitz at third, Baker at second, Cantu at first. Three across in the frame. Those guys in the bullpen trying to cover up. I don't remember Vinny issuing trash bags to cover up with. One, two. Did he go around? Yes, he did. That ends the inning, but not before damage done by Texas. They find a way to put a three spot on the board and walk away with a three nothing lead. Find a way to cover up. A lot of Longhorn fans enjoying the game here. Out in the elements. Team shop is happy. Absolutely. Selling some of those ponchos. ponchos. A lot of folks up underneath the clamshell here at UFCU Dishfuck Field. Uh, <laughs> tucked up underneath. Sold out under the clamshell. Absolutely. Texas with a three spot in the bottom of the first. 
Ty Colberth now back to the mound for his second inning of work. He issued a base hit, pitched around that in the first. He'll face the five, six, and seven hitters. As Wright will lead it off. Kobe, senior from Castro Valley, California. Right, two for six in the two ball games last night. Line to left, another leadoff base hit for Kansas. I'll tell you what, they just keep coming after you. Not hit. Firmly, just off the end, but enough to get out in the left field and get a leadoff man on. Devin Foyle will step in. He is a freshman from Fountain Hills, Arizona. He had a big night last night. He was three for nine, but he drove in seven in the doubleheader. And he hits this ball well out to left. Going back as Jones, he won't get it. Wow. It's high off the wall. On his way to third is right. Full to second, and he continues to swing the bat well for the Kansas Jayhawks. Jumping on the first pitch from Ty. See a fastball just right down the middle. This ball's a foot from leaving the park. It's a good swing on it. He got out there in a hurry. Watch where this ball hits on the wall. Right up top. About a foot short of going out of here. So second and third and nobody out for Marcus Wheeler. Wheeler, one for five in the series so far. And he's driven in a run. First extra base hit of the ball game by either club. As good as Michael Tinsley's been, I'll tell you what, that Devin Foyle can swing the bat. They have both been impressive in this series. Switch hitter is Foyle. The junior steps in. Good breaking ball. Has him over the top of it. Strike one. Ties on a few of those so far. The first couple of innings back back legging them. Texas will surrender a run. The infield back across the board for Texas. Just rips that ball foul. A very effective pitch. Same pitch. Wheeler just swung over that one there. You get it far enough in to where that's really the only thing the hitter can do with it. Now you have him looking for that night. Good time to either go up or away. Something out of the zone. Over set. It's going to go up top. Fish not biting. Like the location though. One and two to Wheeler. Gotta make sure you get that one in there, though, if you're going to throw that one down and in. Yeah, don't leave it over the middle. Just missed there. The count evens. Does a nice job of keeping it in front. Tags him. Big strikeout. First of the ball game. That one wasn't the back legger. This one is a slider that's over the plate right there. Looks like a strike. Breaks at the end. Good pitch. Good location for that pitch. Kansas 0 for 3 now in the ball game with runners in scoring position. T.J. Martin, the sophomore from Overton Park, steps in. Martin, one for four in last night's second game of the doubleheader. On the ground to third. Clements across the diamond in time. And Kansas is on the board. That was a good pitch by Ty. You know, 
Martin was going to be aggressive with runners in scoring position, made a good pitch, and got the out. Greg steps in. Tanner, sophomore from Overland Park himself, behind the plate. It's his first plate appearance of the series. Over the top of that fastball. Colbert's been outstanding for the first nine hitters. Seven out of nine. He started them off with strike one. The other things, when he's pitching really well, he gets outs quickly. We haven't seen that as much. He's had to go deeper counts. But pitch count only at 24 at this point. Nice job does Barrera to keep that in front. Caught that one all, all arm. Or stopped it all arm. Right here's where you want to make a pitch and get this out. Foul back. Count evens at two and two. Senior set popped right side. Mathis has a beat on it. Puts it away, and that ends the inning. Kansas, though, get back in the ball game. It's a 3 1 game. When you need Texas baseball on Longhorn Network, it's brought to you by Whataburger. Get your day started at Whataburger with a jalapeno cheddar biscuit. Busy day here on LHN. We'll see the spring game, the orange-white game, brought to you by Weber Grills across I-35 at DKR earlier today. And now back across on the east side of I-35. Game three of this three-game set, Keith Orland, Greg Swindell, and now a new pitcher in the second inning. Hayden Edwards comes on. He's a 6'8", 195-pound senior. From Overland Park, Kansas. Another Overland Park, Kansas kid. Making his 11th appearance, five and a half ERA. Got a strikeout an inning. Got four pitches: fastball, curveball, slider, and a changeup. It's almost like you're starting a game coming in in the second inning. Coach Price looking for Edwards to give him. Some length out of that pen. Edwards with just a 16 and a third innings on the season. He comes on here. The NBA playoffs started today at, at 6 8. <laughs> he looks like he could be playing for a really good basketball at Fog Allen Fieldhouse to go with that in the NBA playoffs. 6 8. Right hander. Drafted by the Royals in the 2012 draft, 31st round. Back to the top of the order. Texas sent nine men to the plate in the first. First pitch misses inside. Now it's partly sunny. What's going on here? Wait five minutes, it'll change. Four for six in the series, as you can see. Travis Jones. Fastball there, couldn't catch up to it, and it's one and one. Edwards had warmed up quite a bit in that first inning. So he should be ready to go here.
Patrick, we've talked so much about it lately of how important strikes are. If you put yourself in two and one, two and zero, oh, and three and one counts, you're going to be in trouble as a pitcher. Going to be in trouble, and especially if you're not commanding an off-speed pitch, you don't feel comfortable throwing an off-speed pitch when you're behind in the count. You have to throw a fastball. That one has some good tail on it. Got in on Travis a little bit. Yeah, you can get you can get in trouble if you only have one pitch and it's it's iffy. Eleven times in 18 frames. The Longhorns have had their leadoff guy reach in this series. That, put, that ignites this offense for Texas. And they've been good offensively in this series. Hit pretty well to center, but playable. Only underneath it, able to make the play for the first out of the inning. Slight breeze blowing from right to left out of the south. A lot of these storms that are coming through are rain showers or moving up from the Texas coast. Being pushed by that southerly breeze. Cody Clements sacrificed his first time up. Probably got up this morning, wasn't sure if he'd even play today, and all of a sudden he's in the second inning, he's in the ballgame. Did you want to know that you were going to pitch or? No. Okay. No, never. <laughs> it's better off the, 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 with the phone rings. You have time say, to think about it. <laughs> yeah. nothing, phone rings say, Swindell, you're in. Nothing better than being down there, and especially in a, in a crucial situation, and the phone rings and they look at you. And, Say you're up. You get a rush when that happens. Counts. Two and one to Cody. Now, if it rings in the first inning, you're like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Upstairs, and it's three and one. If you win the locker room after BP, you might have just had some wings or. Peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you know, thing hadn't even settled in Europe. Different mindset when you know you're starting and when you're coming out of the pin. 3 1. Just threw it by. That's a good live fastball right there. That was a good one. First couple to Cody, just drifting a little bit out front. That one, he stayed, got a good balance point. Got something behind it. Yeah, it's 6 8. He's got that good, we talk a lot about tall pitchers, they get that good angle. They can get on top of it. Payoff pitch. Back out of play. True freshman from Houston. Playing third today. He's done a nice job filling in at short. We haven't seen him much at second. But he can play second as well. Good at bat right here. Peyton did go three and two thirds innings in their series against TCU. Threw 58 pitches in that outing, so he can he can lengthen it out a little bit. Eighth pitch of this at bat. Got him. Just kept pouring it in there. That's a nice job. Big right hander retired the first two he's faced. He found his balance point you see right there. He really gets that leg up, front leg, and drives towards home plate. Like you said, it's very important, especially taller pitchers, that you get that nice set. You don't drift. When you drift, your, your arm's late, everything's late, and the ball just, just drags, and it, it flattens out, and it stays up. His last three to Cody were, were good fastballs. Brewer walked and scored his first time up. Well, that is a good arm slot where he gets that good tilt right there. Going downhill from 6'8. Hard to get on top as a hitter of that fastball. You talk about the mound being 12 inches and the air is different. It must be real different when you're 6'8. Uh, seven and a half foot in the air right there. <laughs> That was a good pitch. That was a good pitch. 
there a slip front foot came loose but he's down 0-2 he's reached base five out of his last six plate appearances on the ground to short off on the cross in time in a one two three inning we go to the third three one Texas all across when you take a look when you're doing our job folks you sort of look at a series you sort of break it down and see what's going on Greg and I talk and and go over things and we both said well it's probably going to be a low scoring series both these teams have struggled to score some runs we well, thought that not necessarily <laughs> we've had 34 runs in the series 54 hits 18 extra base hits and both teams have been above average I would say with runners in scoring position in the series it's been quite different than what we thought both these teams lots of extra base hits in this series I mean you can get a lot of hits but 18 extra base hits in a series and it's only two games and two innings in. They've been doing a very good job of swinging the bat. Been exciting. It has been. Top of the order. Moroni. Singled his first time up. He's had a good series. Five for 11. Eight out of 10 batters. Colberth has been out in front with strike one. Can you throw too many strikes? You can. Yeah, I mean, I've been there, done that. You don't, you don't want to throw throw balls. I mean, you can throw effective ones, but sometimes you can be around the zone too much where hitters get comfortable. Ball popped up. Clements has a play on it. Puts it away. One gone here. Panaya Chuck will step in. He sacrificed his first time up. Two ninety on the season. Just filling the strike zone up. Nine out of eleven now. First pitch strikes. That is such a key for me. See if he can expand a little bit with a breaking ball. Doesn't have to. Paints it. That's why he's got six wins. Leads the Big 12 Conference. He's done so many different things in the course of his career here. He's been a middle relief guy. He's been a specialist at a time. He didn't really start closing until the end of middle middle end of last season. You we were worried about was he conditioned for it? We went out and threw 106 pitches against TCU in six innings. Good breaking ball right there by Ty Colbreth to get the strikeout. Second strikeout. And I think the defense is so ready to play behind him because he gets the ball, gets ready to go. And the rain starts down again. You can see him look up. Say, is this going to come back again? It's going to be one of those days where it's off and on all day long. The thing is, your defense, when you when you throw strikes, that's when your defense is happy. It's when you get out there, you can throw a, a shutout, but throw 170 pitches and be all over the place, and your defense is like, man, that was a Pop, long game. Popped up again. Foul territory. Clements has it. One, two, three for the Jayhawks here in the third. 3 1 Texas. In 1970, the state capital in Austin, Texas. The Rotunda. Getting a little rain on today. 3 to 1 Texas as we go to the bottom of the third inning. We were asked by our wonderful producer, Drew Irvine, to come up with some midseason awards for the Big 12. Mine, I go with the player of the year right now, Eric Gutierrez, having a a good season out there in Tech, leading them to one loss. Ty Colbert, Texas starting pitcher today. I got him as my pitcher of the year. Luke and Baker doing everything for TCU as freshman, and Tim Tadlock, my midseason coach of the year of those Red Raiders. Be hard to argue with those four that you have chose right there. Mine look a little different than that. We'll give you those as we go as Casey Clement steps in. 
Aiden Edwards out for his second inning of work. Which misses downstairs. I think you said in between innings, you know, Kansas goes back to play defense and starts raining again. It is coming down pretty good. Coach Gus around here anywhere? <laughs> he can make it rain to stop on a heartbeat. Could rain all day and then game time it would stop. He can find a way to make it playable. Upstairs and it's 2-0. and Look what's going on in the conference. It just, I don't think anybody would think you could go through this conference 11, halfway through, and be 11 and one. So the Red Raiders definitely they're doing something right. They're doing some good things right. There's no question. Tim Tadlock. I would put him, and I will. And we'll show it here in a moment after this at bat. Choices I had. I, I, I have him listed as coach of the year. There's no question. He's done an outstanding job. They picked fifth. Preseason. Foul back. Just saw where TCU swept OU this weekend and outscored them 25 to 5. Next weekend, Longhorns travel to Lubbock. Three game set and a huge three game set for the Longhorns against the top rated Red Raiders, at least leading the conference at this point. And the 2 2. Ripped into the gap in left center. Going to be hard to cut off. Paul gets to it, knocks it down, but Clements will be into second with a leadoff double. But once it got over the shortstop, good job. Casey's done a good job of that lately, of taking that pitch that's thrown away hit and hitting it the other way. Well, that ball got over the shortstop. That was a good job, too, by Foyle stopping that ball. But it got on the turf and just skipped out there. Plymouth's now two for two in the ball game. Patrick Mathis steps in. Mathis grounded to second his last time up. Both teams now with three hits apiece. Tenth double of the year for Casey Clements. Thought we were going to have to see a breaking ball. He hadn't thrown one. Well, now with the rain, it's, well, that's even tougher because it, it's a different grip on the ball. You have to have a good feel for it, and if it's slightly wet, it's kind of difficult. The 1-0. Oh. Yeah. Hard down the left field line. Maybe a good thing that it is raining. <laughs> There's no one down there. Back out to the field to play. Texas two for four with runners in scoring position in the ball game so far today. Those are all big numbers when you can get those knocks when they're in scoring position. It's coming down hard right now. It's almost like a like a fog too. Or is that just my bifocals? <laughs> you get a little moisture on your glasses, you can see it right there. Guys still sitting on the edge of the bench, Chef. They're still out there. They're still out there. You know, you can lean back and get <laughs> underneath the dugout. You know, three feet back, <laughs> this, this drive. 2 1. Downstairs, and it's 3 and 1. Edwards tries to go back. It's the front foot. Greg, is it not that you really need to keep clean? Because that's your land foot, the one that's coming down. It would be his left foot, the one that he's got to keep those cleats ready. Because that's the one you don't it's, want to slip. That's the one you put most of the pressure on when you, as, as you're landing. You're correct. Mathis fouls that back. You see there, he walks in front of the mound. And when he walks in front of the mound, it's, it's even wetter. So it, he gets moisture on his cleats and gets back on the dirt. You really, I mean, it's tough, but you have to just kind of stay in one spot when it's like that. Get your cleats cleaned off and just stay in one spot. Kansas wearing the sanitaries and the stirrups. Old school. Old school. I'll just fall back. A lot of teams now wearing the soccer style sock. 50 plus foul balls in the doubleheader yesterday. 
been quite a few today already. Wow. There was a ton of pitches in yesterday's doubleheader. Three and two to Mathis. Seventh pitch coming in this at bat. Downstairs, ball four. Looking at my picks for the midseason awards in the Big 12, Roselli has just been outstanding for me. Uh, Gutierrez, it was a good call. I think he's good, but. Well, we saw Elliott come through here. He can, he can hit. He's still hitting 450 on the year. He's got 50 something hits already. Davis Martin has done everything. He started, he's come out of the bullpen for the Red Raiders. He's 4 0 in the season. He's a young pitcher, but boy, he's done an outstanding job. He's also saved two ball games. I agree down. with you with Luke and Baker. And two way player, best freshman maybe in the country, not only in the Big 12. And then Tim Tadlock at this point. You go 11 and 1 to start your conference season with 24 conference games. You're halfway home and yeah. one loss. Uh, Red Raiders, you look at the stats for the conference, the top 10, they got about four pitchers in there. I mean, that's, that's to me, that's something new. Usually they can, they can swing the bat, but they got a pitching staff this year, yeah, too. Yeah, and, and the other part, it's, it's, I think the Red Raiders are, are really. Relying on is it's a very veteran veteran offensive club. They have five or six guys that have played an awful lot of baseball, and their youth is on the pitching side, and they're pitching extremely well at this point. So it's a, a pretty good combination of youth and veteran yeah. leadership, veteran production. We're talking about all the pitches thrown yesterday in the doubleheader. Six hundred and sixty-eight pitches. Were thrown, and you and I saw every one of them. Today, there's been 13 foul balls, 10 by Texas, three by Kansas. Zane Gerwitz steps in, bunt situation here. He does square, pulls the bat back. Ball gets away. Doesn't have to bunt now. Everybody up 90 feet. Greg, ball hit hit his glove. I don't think that ball hit the turf. Take Chance a look. See it again here. That was down. He just went down to get it. He didn't know he didn't have it. Through the wickets. Everybody up. Good chance of being a pass ball, and it is. That one gets away. Coming in is Clements. He scores. Four to one, Texas. He does score, but you got to be really careful with that slide right there. A head first slide into home. You got Edwards coming to cover the plate. I never like a head first slide. I've seen some injuries, some head injuries. You'll see the slide right here. And look at Edwards. He just about stepped on Casey's hand right there. Well, gets away. See the throw back to the plate. Watch how far Clements goes by the bag. He's going to slide 15 feet. Turf is moist. 2 0. Fouled out of play. Activity again in the Kansas bullpen. Double walk, wild pitch, pass ball. Texas on the board again. This one back to the screen as well. Coming on to score is Mathis, and it's a five to one game. We've seen Tulane coach David Pierce take a shortstop out of the game. We might have a position change right here. It's been a tough go for Tanner Gregg back there. And each one of them have scooted on him. He tried to get down to block right there. You can see it instead of come up, it scooted. Math is just ahead of the throw. That's two runs, and Texas hadn't put the ball in play to have them score. See right here as he gets out and gets ready to block it, ball just scoots right there. It really doesn't come up, it skims because the turf is wet. If, if, you're used to the ball coming up when you play on dirt. It, it's not easy to catch on synthetic turf. 
the first time you go catch on it. It takes a while to get to adjust to it. Much less wet turf. Gerwitz a threat to run at any time here. On the ground. This could be two. Bobble into center. Gerwitz on his way to third. Second miscue of the ball game for Kansas. Texas pouring it on here. Both times Joe Baker's been on the other end. This ball is tailor made, but again, it stayed down. You would think that ball would have some sort of hop on it, but just stayed down on McLaughlin. Kansas has struggled at times to catch the ball. You see the numbers right there. It's cost him in this ball game. Still nobody out as Michael Cantu steps in. Cantu walked his first time up. Bunch through it, safety squeeze situation on a breaking ball. Two for seven in the series is Michael. Quickly, he's down on the count, no balls and two strikes. Extra base runners. One base hit in the inning for Texas, and it's led to two. Still nobody out in the inning and a couple on. Keeps the bat alive. Edwards could climb the ladder right here. He's got Cantu reaching from his last couple of breakables. See if he comes back with a high fastball here. Pets is the outside corner. He's painted that one. It's a good pitch. Fastball. Lower zone, outer half. Freezes Michael. Tyler Rand will step in. He's tough to double up. He's got excellent speed. Struck out his first time up. That was against Goddard. This is his first time to face Edwards. You got a chance to step on it. You need to keep, keep stepping going. on the gas. Keep going. Away again. Third run of the inning that scores as the ball gets by Tanner Gregg. Not sure if Gregg is picking this up. This is again the fastball. It did hit the turf, but easily catchable. That's frustrating. Frustrating for Gregg, the pitcher, and for Kansas. 6-1 ball game now. To right falls in for a base hit holding it third is Baker second hit of the inning back to the top of the order to Travis Jones third at bat in three innings and the second was a one two three inning for Texas Nine batters in the first, three in the second. And this will be the seventh batter of the frame here in the third for Texas. Breaking ball in there for strike one.
He was able to get in front of that one. And I don't think that one hit his glove. That sounded like it hit his arm or his leg. He was going to do everything he could do to stop that one. It takes me back to the first time somebody said, Keith, we're going to try you at catcher. The pitcher got to know my number going back to the screen. <laughs> Safety squeeze works perfectly. Coming in to score is Baker. 7-1 Texas lead. RBI Travis Jones. Perfectly executed. Good bunt by Jones and good read by Joe. 7-1 Texas lead now. It's Cody Clemens with his third at bat in three innings. Off of the fist, back out of play. Texas has seven runs, but only four hits. Got a lot of misplayed balls. They were two for five the first time through the order. This is the second trip through the order. They were, they were two for seven, but both have led to runs both times. Three in the first, three here in the third, four in the third now. Hit pretty well to left, full going back. Under puts it away in the inning over, but not before damage done again by Texas. They come up with four through a third, 7 1. Hey, Alex Loeb here with this LHN update. Spring game highlights. Highly touted freshman Shane Bouchel did not disappoint. First quarter hooking up with Armani Foreman. Second quarter finding. The big guy with the long strides. Big play, Burt. John Burt for 65 yards. Bouchelle, 299 yards and two touchdowns in the spring game. Thank you very much, Alex. You can see some of the notable players in the spring game. Obviously, Shane Bouchelle, Greg, they had an outstanding spring game. Chris Warren, though, getting to see some of that, he was <laughs> outstanding. John Burt did catch that touchdown pass, but he had one in his hands from Tyrone Swoop is about 70 as well. Yeah, he did. I mean, a big day for those guys. Good to see that from Shane Bouchel. Competition is always good. And at that, that, that position is one that Texas is really looking for. And Bouchel showed some really good touch out there today. Well, I think there's two things that jump off the page for me. And just real quickly, we're doing a baseball game, <laughs> but the two things that jump off the page is one, how quickly they got to the line of scrimmage. It's a real good idea by both quarterbacks of the concept of the offense. When you're running plays every 12 or 13 seconds, right. you have a real concept of the offense. And the other part, those big guys up front. I think this offensive line could be really good before it's all over. Talking to Roger Wallace, they said that one half they ran 110 plays. Got called off <laughs> because of the rain there. halfway through. When you look at this one, Texas has taken advantage of the fact that Kansas' inability really to catch the ball here in game three. They have a 7 1 lead. Yeah, Texas, they're swinging the bat well, but they have a good eye. The weather's had a lot to do with it. The catcher Tanner Gregg unable to, to catch a few. Texas scored three runs in that last inning on, on pass balls and wild pitches, but uh, both teams have to play in the elements. Texas has to catch the ball too. We're a third of the way through. I think they're about to finish fixing the mound with the rain. They put some diamond dust on the mound to get some better footing, but Texas. Texas is playing well. They play, played well all series, and Casey Clemens again gets it started off last inning with an extra base hit. Yeah, he's done a nice job there. They are fixing the field, working on it, trying to get it prepared to play. You look at this, and going forward the rest of this ball game, the one thing you don't want to get anybody injured, right. obviously that's the first thing the umpires are thinking about. Second part of it, you want to get this done today because you don't want to waste. Colbert has already thrown it up. He's done for the weekend. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, you never know. Right now, we've got two more innings to make it official, make it five-inning game. Texas has a seven to one lead. Ties has thrown well. It's going to continue to throw well, but you want to keep that lead because you never know when it's really going to open up. Yeah, it is coming at any time. Glad you're with us on a busy afternoon here, Saturday afternoon on LHN. A lot of things happening with the spring game. And into this series. So they got the field ready. Colbert is ready to go. 
It'll be the four, five, and six hitters due for Kansas here as we go to the home half. Actually, the visitors half of the fourth inning, top of the fourth. Michael Tinsley hasn't been out very often. He's 0 for 1 in this one, but 6 for 10 in this series. The first pitch strike. He's been, been impressive this weekend, has Michael Tinsley. time he's really seen a left-hander for an extended number of times he has a couple of bats out of the bullpen out of the Texas bullpen against left-handed pitching but in right field in today's game on the Johnny bitch watch list They're the best catcher in the nation in college baseball a lot of innings behind the plate yesterday yeah, still I needed still needed what eight eight more to catch Cameron Rupp in the 25 inning ball game I called every pitch of that as a broadcast <laughs> I was right down there on the third row started at six o'clock ended after one o'clock in the morning fights it off pitch was upstairs Michael Tinsley continues to swing the bat he is just a really good collegiate hitter it wasn't a, wasn't a bad pitch I mean it was in it ate him up Interest setting up inside. This ball's in, in, but he just muscled that ball out into right field. Dropped his hands. Yeah, get those hands inside. Got the barrel of the ball to the ball. Kobe Wright singled to left his first time up. Came in to score. It's the ball pretty well to center. Rand has a beat on it. Under puts it away for the first out of the inning. So one gone here. I think if Ty can continue to throw that a quality first or second pitch, you might see him start getting quick outs. He's going to be around the plate. Kansas, he's not going to walk people. But only had eight on the season. Ball doubled high off of the left field wall his first time up. Which is upstairs for ball one. He's had an outstanding series as well. That is not a misprint, folks. He's driven in seven in the first two ball games. Of this series. Here one, comes the rain one, again. One foot away from having two more. Yes, sir. It is coming down again. I think this bodes well for a guy who is very compact. And very sure of his windup. Ty doesn't have a lot of movement in his windup. It's very short, compact, and release. I think that helps it. I think if you got big movement in your windup, it's hard to throw in this kind of rain. Well, yeah. And he, re he repeats it. I mean, his, his step towards the plate is the same. It lands in the same spot every time. So you're saying a Rob Dibble might have a little trouble? Oh, I think I would. I'd hate to get in the box against him. <laughs> Does a nice job keeping that in front. I just think that 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 is key. Uh, oh yeah. Because you're you don't have great footing right now. Uh, you're, you're uncertain about your yes. footing. It's back to the rosin bag, which I think they've changed out as well. In that little delay when they were working on the mound. This first three ball count of the game for Ty. Pulls it foul. Player, folks are going to get to know in this Big 12. He's a true freshman from Fountain Hills, Arizona. Just up from Scottsdale, off of Shea Boulevard. Sunrise Canyon, pretty good golf course up there. It is. I played <laughs> it. Didn't play it very well. Out to left. This ball's got some carry on it. But it's hooked foul. Call that Barrera land. It landed up over the flags up out there. You see him picking it up under the tree across the street. I wonder if he's going to say something to Tress when he gets back. Hey, you're not the only one. Tress is going to say, yeah, but mine was fair. Yeah, <laughs> mine counted. <laughs> yeah. Well, it looked like he got it. It didn't look like he got extension on that, did it? 
He's got Short. a dub. Breeze has picked up a little bit too. Sure has. Out to left. Texas a double play depth. Downstairs. Ball four. First walk issued by the senior from Bryant. 50 pitches now in the ballgame. Attack over with one gone here in the fourth. As it lets up. This test. It's like the worst kind because this test you. You almost wish it would just stay. Yeah, it's this <laughs> test steady. Kansas 0 for 5 with runners in scoring position. And this one. Hard to keep your concentration. Wheeler. There goes the runner. Throw to second base. In time. As they get fold on the backside of the steal. Nice job by Gerwitz and Barrera to recognize that there was going to be no chance to get Tinsley at third. Well, Tress watching the play the entire time. Tinsley is almost at third base when Tress catches the ball. Really difficult, more difficult for the runner unless you know the sign is on and he's going, the runner at first. He good job late. by Gerwitz, too, to be there in time. Might have been a break for Texas. It looked like that left foot might have got in there ahead of the tag. Doesn't matter, it's an out. Second one of the inning. Two and zero to Wheeler. Rip to center. Two zero pitch, elevated it. Kansas gets their third, second run of the ball game. How big is that throw out at second now? That's a couple runs right there. Second RBI by Wheeler in the series. Very big, very important about getting ahead when you're behind, regardless of the weather, what it's like when you're behind and you have to throw a fastball. Hitters know it. Got a good fastball and put a good swing on it. T.J. Martin steps in on the ground to the left. Clements has it, sets his feet, throw is a little high. Big Brother brings it in. And the inning is over. Kansas does get on the board. 7-2 game. Extra base runners moving up. It's been a struggle for Kansas so far. Ball's been getting away. We've had two pass balls. Three wild pitches in the inning. Texas took advantage of all of them. They put a four spot on the board in the bottom of the third. Difficult thing right there. Rich Price making that move. Five walks in the game. Two pass balls, two errors. How about those extra outs? You're gonna, gonna be in trouble. And some changes defensively. John Rimmick in behind the plate. And on the mound is a true freshman. It's Goldsberry. Goldsberry, Blake, 6'4, 190 pound freshman from. Richland's Ranch, California. They struggle getting people out this year. 16 plus innings, 29 hits and 11 walks. Struggles with his command. Three pitch pitcher, fastball slider and a changeup. Face the three, four, five hitters for Texas here. Seven two ball game. And it's clear right now. Four for nine in the series and a big fly. How about five for ten? One for two in this one now is Barrera after that base hit. Good extension. He's been hitting the ball hard, too. It hasn't, hasn't been a cheap. Ball's getting off his back. Casey Clements had a good ball game. He scored twice, he has singled and doubled. Five hits apiece for both clubs now. Texas with a 7-2 lead. That's those extra outs we were talking about. Clements six for 10 in this series. Over 300 now is Casey on the season. Well, that's pretty amazing. It's a 100 point rise. Right at 100 points. 
had a magnificent month of April. I guess it helps when you can see rotation. <laughs> Started wearing those glasses. He took off. In there for a strike and count evens. Difficult to keep those clean. Try to keep your head ducked. I told him during batting practice, you're gonna need some windshield wipers. Downstairs with a breaking ball. That's going up. Started wearing the glasses right at the end of February. Think about that. Good month of March and an outstanding month here in April. Three and one. Kansas looking for a double play ball. Ferrer will not be running here, 3-1. Downstairs, ball four. Goldsberry. Trying to get through this frame. Patrick Mathis will step in, sophomore from Waco. He has walked and scored. Hit pretty well to center. Going back, Mahoney can't come up with it. Barrera comes in. Here comes Clements, stopped at third. It's an 8-2 game. Clements read that very well. Yeah, he was past second base. When the ball got over Maroney's head, he was trying to run up Trace's back. Trace was going to score, and a good job by Tommy Nicholson out there. A good read coming up the line right at the end, holding Casey up. Ball was hit firmly, just out of the reach of Maroney. And I guess the um, only question is. How do you hit the ball 400 feet and get a single? <laughs> I'm wondering about that myself. It was a long single as Gerwitz steps in. It's an 8-2 game. Still nobody out in the inning. Couldn't check his swing for strike one. Six hits now in the ball game for Texas. In fact, I have to change my scorebook. I'd already written down double. Pulls it back. Safety squeeze situation. Casey Douglas warming up for Kansas. Trying to stay, keep everything dry down there as well. See the tarp, they put that over when it's raining, but you can't leave it on there when you're warming up, and right now the rain has stopped. This is outside, and it's two and one. Goldsberry set. On the ground. Could be two. The one to relay to first in time. The ninth run for Texas comes in to score. Gerwitz is not credited with an RBI on the 4 6 3 double play ball. Casey Clements does come in to score. That brings Joe Baker to the plate. He's 0 for 2, but he's been on base twice. Scored a run. Both the Kansas errors have happened when Joe swings the bat. Break the ball downstairs for ball one. Joe had a bunt attempt in the first, and Padaya couldn't get a handle and threw it away, and the ball got under 
McLaughlin in the second of bat. Texas has had their leadoff guy reach in three or four innings. All three times that the leadoff hitter of the innings has reached, he scored. On the ground to third, Badiachuk. Cross in time. Two more for Texas. It's a 9 2 ball game. Game three of this three game set. We're into the top of the fifth inning. It's a 9 2 Texas League. We get the opportunity to go down into the Longhorn dugout and visit with head coach Augie Grito. Coach, you get off to a good start again. Boy, it's been so important as of late to get out in that first inning, and that was important in this one so far. Doing a good job offensively. Really helps the pitching, loosens everybody up, helps the hitting, and also helps the defense. Hey, Coach, where? how come we didn't have the glasses on Casey the last couple years? Uh, because we didn't know he needed them. <laughs> but <laughs> since, since he's put those things on, he's really turned things around. Yeah, he has. He, he's developed a two-strike swing that he sticks with it where he just tries to stay inside the ball and hit it to left the opposite field we'd like for everybody to try and do that <laughs> yes sir thanks for taking the time coach <laughs> head coach Augie Garrido as Casey Clements is off to an outstanding start he has scored three runs in this game he's two for two with a single and a double Ty Colbert now staked to a seven run lead as he comes out for his fifth inning of work he'll be facing John Rimmick who came in to catch first plate appearance for Rimmick Right back to the mound, bobbled. That took an unusual hop on Colbert, who is an excellent fielding pitcher. That ball came up on him. Well, you never, when a pitcher makes a play like that, you don't usually see an error, but I think this was hit softly. You see it hit. It hit the dirt. That's a top spin on it. Yep. That's some top spin on it. Kind of played a little lackadaisical. See, good one right here. Just kind of played it nice and easy, and the ball just hopped up on him. Back to the top of the order. E1. It does go as E1. We're on it. One for two in this one. Out of play. Quickly, it's 0-2. Senior from California has had a good series. Center field today, played right in the first two ball games yesterday. Out to right center. Mathis ran. Good communication that time. Mathis able to come up with it. Well, there was some vocal communication going that time because you could see Rand headed that way and the at the end it just kind of fades off. But I Chuck will step in. He has sacrificed and struck out. You're right. There's good communication there. You can see Rand say, you take it. Things that Kansas has done is continue to run. That's why you would throw over. You think 9-2 exactly. why are you throwing over, but they continue to try to run the bases. Off of the fist. Baker has it. He almost tried to. I knew he was going to do that. He was trying to. Right at the last minute. Well, he, was, he was checking to see if the runner, right. what the runner was doing. He saw the runner was getting down the line and but the runner wasn't was jogging. He was going to let that one drop and try to get a double play. Talked about that on the bunt the other night. Yeah, he did a nice job. Saw that the fact that the Dodge Chuck was running. Lawson steps in. 0 for 2 in this one. Off of Clements into right. On his way to third is Rimmick. Casey upset he didn't make that play. Ball's hit. 
again, that's that scoot on yes. this turf. It's the wet turf. The ball got to him quick on one hop. The turf is dry. You see right here, that ball's jumping on him quick. Just a little late getting down, and it stayed down again. Stayed, didn't, didn't hop up as high as Casey thought because of the wet turf. Sixth hit of the ball game for Kansas. Tough customer here as Tinsley steps in. One for two. He scored a run in this series, this game. Six total in this series now. That's a good weekend. It's a busy weekend. Breaking ball downstairs in the count evens. He's a junior from Menlo Park, California, San Francisco area. Got him guessing that time. Good pitch. He was looking for that breaking ball again. When you get that breaking ball over, and he has a couple of times this game to Tinsley, you're going to look for it and snuck the fastball by him. One and two now. On the ground. Baker goes to second, and that ends the frame. Halfway through, 9-2 Texas. Thanks for coming today. We go to the home half of the fifth here from UFCU Dishfalk Field, Texas with a 9-2 lead. We get the opportunity to go down into the Jayhawks dugout and visit with their head coach, Rich Price. Coach, uh, extra outs. You told us this week when we were talking, leading in, he says one of the things we can't do is give up extra outs, and that's cost you here early in the game. Yeah, it's really hurt us big time, guys. We made a couple bad defensive plays, but more importantly than that was we walked guys and set the table for Texas, and when you're running freshmen out there, I mean, that's a bad formula against a really good team. Coach Michael Tinsley caught two games yesterday in right field today. Tell us uh, how special is he for your team? He's been really good, guys. I mean, I honestly believe he can play any place in the country, and you can see his athleticism. He's, he's very good in the outfield as well. And he can flat hit, Coach. I tell you, he <laughs> takes really good approaches. Last thing is, good luck to you and your team the rest of the season, and thanks for taking the time in each of these ball games to visit with you. You bet. Thanks a lot, guys. You guys do a great job. Thank you very much. Rich Price, always fun to talk to. There's a real relationship between Rich Price and Augie Garrido. Both of them were head coaches at Cal Poly. Coach Garrido from 70 to 72. And Coach Price from 95 to 2002. See that? Rich Price also junior college head coach and sent a lot of players to play for Coach Greta when he was at Cal State Fullerton. So they've known each other for a long, long time. Casey Douglas coming in now for the Jayhawks. Casey Douglas got a three pitch, a fastball. Curveball change up. Fourth pitcher of the game. You look at Douglas making his sixth appearance on the year. As he comes on here. It'll be the eight, nine, and one spots for Texas. Nine two ball game. It is an official game at this point. And this is the third game of the series. Four and a half, as long as Texas has the lead. We might stay a while though <laughs> with the day moving the regular Sunday game to last night. This is usually the scheduled second game of the series. This is the third and final game of the series. Kansas won the first game 11 to 5. If you're just tuning in, and Texas came back last night, really held on to an 8 6 victory. Yes, they did. Made that game interesting last night. Now, normally, the third game, a getaway game of a conference series is that they usually have a run roll because teams usually have to leave but since they're the games were moved up where it's Saturday Kansas is not leaving until tomorrow there is no run roll. two one pitch misses downstairs and it's three and one <laughs> chopped on the ground but I Chuck has it go across in time. I'd like to see Michael Cantu get going offensively. 
He had a good series coming in. He was two for seven. He swung the bat pretty well. Now two for nine in the series. He's too good an offensive player. He has the ability to you, know, you get sort of going in, in a direction, the wrong direction, and you lose that confidence as a hitter. Oh, yeah, and then you, you take pitches, you get called strike threes, and it just, you know, it's like this guy, like last at bat, Michael took the called strike three, and the pitchers were all over the place, except when he came up, they paint one on the outside corner. It seems like that, that happens. It's a ruthless game. Takes Can't. that upstairs as ran. Kansas State, big winner today over West Virginia, 15 to two. It's three in a row for the Wildcats. That drops West Virginia to four and six in conference play. Tell you what, they beat Texas on that Sunday. And watch out. They've won three in a row now. Yeah. Fastball in there for a strike. Two and two to Rand. A lot of the weather throughout the Big 12 and TCU at Oklahoma. TCU swept that series. They got their games in. Yeah, they did. Before the moisture. Ball four upstairs. Outscored OU in that series 25 to 5. Travis Jones steps in. His walk, sacrifice, driven in a run, and scored a run. Both teams with six base hits, Texas with nine runs. Kansas miscues and extra bases. Runner in motion there, ran easily in the second with a stolen base. Still early in the game, you might look up and say it's 9-2, but still in the first five innings, still gotta play the game. Well, also, you look on the other side, Kansas has been attempting stolen bases, so. They're not going to let down. They're going to try to come back and beat you. So they're going to keep trying that. You got to keep doing it yourself. Rimmick did a nice job of getting that ball knocked down. It made that a lot closer on a ball in the dirt. He did. And you would anticipate. Just misses right at the very top of the zone over the plate. Didn't get the call, and it's 2 0. It's the one sometimes, you know, as a pitcher, you're like, man, I'm glad he didn't swing at that one. But it's a pretty good pitch to hit. A lot of times it goes far. Right. Like that one? This is out of here. A no doubter. Travis Jones explodes on one. It's an 11 2 ball game. It's a 2 0 fastball. Down, got some good extension, got underneath it, got that ball elevated. Travels out of the park, good 385, 90 feet. Five for eight in the series now. Homer, he's driven in five. For Jones, Clements on the ground. Wheeler has it on the bag. For the second out of the inning. now with seven hits first big fly of the ball game right there second extra base hit 
for Texas. One for two, a couple of runs scored for Barrera. Five for 10 in the series and a mammoth home run last night as we've talked about. The two one from Douglas. Rare didn't think so. Catches the inside corner, and it's two and two. He came right back with the same pitch. He spiked one in the dirt and got that one over the plate. Tried to check his swing. Wright has it. Throw to first. Gets away from Wheeler. Herrera made that turn towards second. Had more time than he thought right there. Herrera upset in himself, trying to check his swing, and Wright tried to catch and go at the same time and couldn't make the play. He just rushed the throw. Really, just kind of nonchalant. Out, I'll get over there in the dugout. Rimmick with a good job of backing up and almost got Triss. Sometimes, as a first baseman, you can help a little bit on that. Wheeler looked like he went to stride maybe a little bit early. You know, it's an adjustment. You know, I don't know how much first base he's played, but when you haven't, you sort of wait and then stride to the throw once you see it. But if you stride out early, and if the throws offline, you can't get to it. Right, that, that one is almost like you don't even need to strike. Yep. Just wait and see where it's thrown. So the E4, third error of the ball game for Kansas. Casey has not been retired. He scored in every plate appearance as well. He's singled and scored, doubled and scored, and walked and scored. Three oh eight on the year as he steps in now. Cutter in there for a strike. Upstairs, ball four. Lots of free passes, lots of miscues by the Jayhawks in this one. Patrick Mathis will step in. He singled the drive in a run his last time up. He has walked and scored and grounded to second. Single off the center field wall. 400 foot single. First pitch outside. Douglas set. His natural fastball has a natural cut to it. Ryan Ralston now getting loose for Kansas. Texas five for 10 with runners in scoring position in the game. Had a good swing at that one. Fouled it back and it's one and two. Here's Ryan. Rich Price looking for someone really just to come in and throw strikes right yep. now. Yep, attack the zone. The one two. 
way outside. Two six and three for Kansas. Eleven seven and one for Texas. Count goes full. Runners will be off with the pitch here. Guerrero at second. Clements at first. There they go. On the ground. Wright has it. Oh. Throw to first. Off wide. <laughs> Wheeler does a nice job. Comes up with it. But Travis Jones. Gives Texas the 11 2 lead. What puts the tower on campus at the University of Texas? 11 2 Texas lead. Keith Borland, Greg Swindell. We go to the top of the six. Texas has scored in every frame except the second, where they went 1 2 3. Todd Colbert has yielded six base hits and two runs in the ballgame. But has a nine run lead as he's out for his sixth inning of work on what has been a soggy day here in the capital city of the great state of Texas. Oklahoma State beat Baylor 10 to 7. Game down there in Waco. TCU in the final game of that series shuts out Oklahoma 2 0. Oklahoma State up on Baylor in the second game. Tech in a non conference game against San Diego State shuts them out 10 to nothing. Tech is on a roll right now, no question about it. Wright, the senior, second baseman steps in for Kansas, faces the senior, Ty Colbert, for Texas. First pitch in there for a strike. Breaking ball downstairs. We've been able to avoid the moisture for the last. 15 or 20 minutes. It's been kind of nice. Cooled off a little bit. 73 degrees on the big board here at UFCU Dishfalk Field. One, two. Nips the outside corner. How about the pitch count? It's pretty still solid. Yeah. Economical. Downstairs. Got that ball up. Ripped to left by right. Tell you what, Kansas in this series has showed me that they can swing the bat as a group. They don't have a lot of power. But they get the ball, barrel of the bat on the ball. They're swinging the bat. And this one just left up in the zone by Ty Colberth. Punched out into left field. Foyle has had a big series. Doubled high off the wall earlier in this ball game. Switch hitter from the right side. It's also walked. So he's one for one in this one. Just misses outside with a changeup. Ripped in front of Jones. Five, fifth hit of the series for Devin Fall. Second hit of the inning for the Jayhawks. First and second, nobody out. Greg, you realize that Kansas has done, tried to get their offense going. They had a leadoff runner on the first, the second, the fourth, the fifth, now the sixth. So five out of six innings. They've had the leadoff guy on. They've out hit Texas eight to seven. Marcus Wheeler steps in. Wheeler drove in a run his last time up. Line drive to center. He's one for two.
The eight hits in the ball game, as you mentioned, but really only one extra base hit. That was Paul's double high off the wall. We had 18 yesterday in the double hitter. 18 extra base hits. There was a lot of a lot of base running yesterday. The first two games, 10 for 28 with runners in scoring position. Cobra has held them to one to set one for seven in this ball game today. Last time up, Wheeler had this same exact count, 2-0. Got a fastball up and got a base hit and an RBI. Upstairs, no activity in the Texas bullpen. There's some stirring going on. See the heads turned looking towards the phone. Yeah. Somebody's talking on the phone. 3-0 right down Broadway and it's three and one. Keep it in the ballpark right here. Let's get a little rollover double play. Now out of the ballpark in that direction is okay. And it's a full count. The payoff. Upstairs, ball four. Second walk issued by Ty. Kansas has them loaded and nobody out. It's been a tough day because of the weather. It's also a tough day on our camera, guys. All of them are sitting out, been out in the rain all day long. Nice work, guys. They have guaranteed they don't have a dry spot on their body. On the ground, should go to the plate. He does for one, the relay to first in time. An unusual turn double play. It goes one, two, three. You gotta love that if you're Ty Culbreth. Good job of getting the ball and the most important part of that play was his throw to Tres Barrera at home. Made sure he got his footing, got a good grip and a perfect delivery to Tress in time to turn two. The old, the old one, two, three. Barrera makes sure he's got his right foot on the base and then he steps out in front of the plate to get the angle to throw to first. Just what the doctor ordered. Still got runners on second and third. But you do have two outs. Rimmick steps in. He reached via an era, his only plate appearance in the series. Looking for his first of the year. 0 for 9. He's got a good pitch coming here. It's a 2 0 count. Comes up empty. Took a big hack at it. Junior from San Diego, California. Over the pitch away from getting out of a bases loaded, nobody out jam. The two two fouled it back. Missed his spot that time, though. He's trying to go in with that fastball. He's struggling in this inning with that pitch. I'd like to see that little bender right here. 
Back door. The 2-2 two -two again. Tried to go away with the fastball. He's got him set up. There. Yep. Rimmick digs back in. The crowd would like to see it too. On the ground. Baker has it. Throw in the dirt. Picked by Casey Clements. Another outstanding play. You can have a lot of things happen good for you if your first baseman can pick it. And that's exactly what he did. Game plan with legendary coach Augie Garrido returns Wednesday night at 8 Central right here on LHN. Catch all things Texas baseball as coach talks strategy and provides insights on the 2016 Texas Longhorns. That's Wednesday at 8 Central right here on LHN. Texas has scored in every frame except the second. Has 11-2 lead here as we go into the soggy half at the bottom of the sixth. It hasn't rained much anymore, but you can just tell everything is soaking wet. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it was not hard rain, but just a steady, heavy mist. Still folks enjoying being at the ballpark. You know, if you're below 12 years old, you, the rain doesn't bother you. You don't melt. If you get above 12, you start to melt in the rain. The Wicked Witch of the West. 1-1 pitch for those that don't know who that, what that is. It's the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> <laughs> the 2-1 to Gerwitz. I want to think there's a lot of people that know who the Wicked Witch of the West is. Good snag. Nice job by Douglas for the first out of the inning. Quick hands. That'll bring Joe Baker to the plate. Joe 0 for 3 in this one. He has reached twice via in there and he scored a run. He's looking for his first base hit. Joe the sophomore from McKinney. Good to have him back in the lineup. To missing 14 ball games with a broken bone in his foot. See that protective shield he's got over that left actually lower part of his leg cutter misses outside and it's one and one next action for the longhorns here on lhn tuesday night six o'clock university of texas rio grande valley visits UFCU Dishbuck Field. The Vaqueros. I have known them in years past as UT Pan Am. The Bronx. Skip Johnson's old school. The 3-1 popped up back out of play. They have a tremendous baseball history at UT Pan Am. Sure they do. Six o'clock. We'll have it for you right here on LHN. Coach Al. Al Ogle threw down there for a long time. Yes, sir. Pay off to Baker. One of Skip's mentors. Out toward left. Coming on is full. Unable to make the play. He had a long run to get there. Yeah. Running a little bit on his heels. This is a great teaching moment right here, Gregory. If you're an outfielder, and you're going after the ball and your heels are hitting the ground. You can see it, see his head bouncing as his heels hit. Because of that, his eyes bounce. And if you look. run on your toes, right there, you, the ball's not bouncing. It just looked a little awkward. I think they're gonna charge him with an error. A lot of times we'll get no. to that after this 3-2 pitch. No error. Popped up again. If the next, if the hitter continues and gets a base hit, a lot of times they will. 
give the outfielder an error, but he makes an out right there. I doubt that they issue an error on the play. They had to run a long way. It was a tough play. Two gone for Texas as Michael Cantu steps in. He's 0 for 2. Saw a lot of pitches last night. Texas has had 10 three, two, three ball counts as a hitting team today. Seen a lot of pitches again. Popped up out toward right. Tinsley underneath makes the play and one, two, three. Second time of the ball game, Texas has gone one, two, three. It's 11 2. Some updates around the Big 12. Texas Tech, as you can see, out of conference play, leads that series 2 0 as they won today 10 1. The interesting one for me is Kansas State beat Texas last Sunday for their first win in conference play. Well, they've won now three in a row as they have taken the second of that three game series at West Virginia, Oklahoma State, in position maybe to go up 2-0 on Baylor in this weekend series. And TCU and Oklahoma, they've already, much like Texas and Kansas, they're playing their three-game series. It's already over with. TCU swept the double hitter today. Who's their record now? TCU put a whooping on them. They did. They're 9-3 and three overall in the season, are the Horn Frogs. Colbert out. Seventh inning of work. That was his 88th pitch of the day. Top of the order here. In the top of the seventh for Kansas. If you look at the Big 12 standings right there. Obviously, the Red Raiders out of conference this weekend, but 11 and 1. Texas, if they can hold on here, move their record to 7 and 5. And Oklahoma State, with their lead, they record. Could move to seven and five. Cowboys will make a visit here last weekend of the month of April, right here at UFCU Dish Falk Field. We'll have it for you here on LHN. Interesting three weeks for Texas after this. Travel to go play the Red Raiders in a crucial Ooh. series. Come back and play the Cowboys here. And then travel to West Virginia. Popped up. Jones has it for the first out of the inning. Lubbock is never an easy place to win. Six I mean, out of the next regardless nine. Regardless of whether they're a World Series team or leading conference 11 and 1 or last in conference, it's always a tough place to win. Shinke will be the pinch hitter. Schinkel steps in. Blake, freshman. First plate appearance of the series. See so pinch hits for Ryan Padayachuk, who was 0 for 2 in this one. Still trying to work that inside fastball. Just hasn't been able to find it most of the game. There's spots where Ty's been able to find it. Keeps trying to throw it. You got that one. Count evens at two and two. That's the one, your bread and butter. You know you can always hit that low and away when you need to. Tried it again. Right at the end of the window for Colbert. I would think they would not push you much over 100. The payoff. Right there. For the strikeout. Well, he tried it four times that at bat with Schinkel. Finally got it on the 3-2 pitch. Working on getting that fastball on the inner half. Makes the pitch. has really done a nice job pitching to contact. Only the third strikeout of the game. Kansas team has put some contact on the ball this weekend. Oh. 
chases the breaking ball and quickly it's 0 2. 23 of 30 batters that have faced Ty Colbert. First pitch strikes. That's pretty good. That's, that's a good number. That one upstairs and it's one and two. Still have the tarp on the pen out there in the Texas bullpen. No movement yet. Over 100 pitches. Got him. Back to back strikeouts to end the seventh. Seventh inning stretch time, 11 2 Texas. And now for our turning point, brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go place. It's really happened over a period of about four minutes of real time. It was the unable to catch the pitch behind the plate. We had two pass balls and three wild pitches, and it led to that four run third inning and that changed the complexion of this ballgame without a doubt. It was an inning where you could see the weather that inning could have been affecting this just ball wasn't coming up like Greg was expecting it to and just got got a little wild and couldn't catch the ball. You know that all happened in real time in four or five minutes quick. It seemed like you know with four different hitters at the plate and that kind of thing but it happened real quickly as Ralston into the game Ryan. Right hander into the game for the Jayhawks 11 2 Texas lead here in the bottom of the seven Tyler ran steps in 2 and 0 oh. to ran he's one for two in this one he scored a run stole a bag four for ten in the series it's outside and it's three and oh. A four pitch walk. According now to my sources, and they're pretty reliable, that according to the home plate umpire, yes, there is a run rule. Well, I think the run rule is in effect in the third and final game of a series, and so this would be that. We'll see how it goes. Karaku is the new third baseman. David comes in to play third. So he's the new third baseman for the Jayhawks. Back to the top of the order. It's Travis Jones. Sit one into the night time. Even though it's the daytime. He had a bomb his last time up. A couple of three ribbies on the day. It's one for two on the day. Which misses downstairs. Ralston has not thrown a strike since coming into the game. So if there is one, it's 10 runs. One run would do it. That's what I mean. 12 to 2. 12 to 2 would do it. One right here. You're calling it? Well, no, I'm just saying one one run this inning and yeah. it's over. <laughs> that was kind of like a who's on first right there. Let's try to figure it out. The 2-0. Upstairs and it's 3-0. Two runs, eight hits, three errors. For Kansas, 11 runs, seven hits, one miscue for Texas. Four outside the zone again, eight consecutive pitches. And Texas has a couple on here in the bottom of the seven. Cody Clements will step in. He has sacrificed, struck out, fly to left, and grounded to first. Looking for his first base hit on the day. Austin steps off and then steps back, looks back for the sign. Upstairs for ball one, nine in a row outside the zone. In case there is a run scored here, I wanted to get this in before the game was over. Shane McCarthy, right handed pitcher from Seton Hall last year against Long Island, Brooklyn, 
an 88 pitch perfect game. It's impressive. <laughs> Pretty solid right there. That's pitching to contact. 88 pitches. Perfect game. 10 outside the zone. In there for a strike. And it's two and one. Upstairs. Going back to what we were talking about earlier in the broadcast, there are times when you see guys, they are just aiming it. They're nowhere near as free and easy. You can tell right now he's just trying to aim the ball in the strike zone. The 3-1. In there for a strike. Or was it? Or was it? Looks like ball four. Chance to see that again. Pass ball. It's not called a strike, and that loads the bases. Doesn't even go down as a pass ball because it was ball four. Yeah. Kansas will bring the infield up here. Probably outfield too. And it's just it's like playing in extra innings when you know that run at third ends the ball game. Breaking ball upstairs for ball one. Three consecutive walks here. If there is a walk, all runners must go touch the base. Yes, they do. The 1 0. That catches the corner, and it's 1 and 1. <laughs> 1 1. Upstairs and it's two and one. Barrera steps back in. Upstairs and it's three and one. I think you take a pitch here. It oh, yeah. sounds crazy, but one pitch away from. Winning the series. In there for a strike. Oh, if he can do that again, Tress should get a fastball right here. The 3 2. Fouled it straight back. Probably ball four, but. As a hitter, he wants to end it on something yeah. else. He doesn't want to end it on the walk. We'll do it again at 3 2. Popped up behind home plate. Just into the front row. I'll tell you what, those two right there. Were very lucky. <laughs> they, were, they, they couldn't look, find. They were looking down. They couldn't find it. I don't think they looked for it. No. When they say heads up, you don't. Not supposed to look down. <laughs> that was close. Three two again. Inside corner strike three call. It was a good pitch. I mean, Boston hasn't been too much around the zone the entire inning, but got the call right there on 3-2. Kansas will move back to double play depth in the infield. They can turn a double play, get out of the inning here. Casey Clements steps in. He has not been retired in the ball game. He has singled and scored, doubled and scored, walked twice, scored three times. Upstairs for ball one. The 
the game does extend to pass this with Ty Colbert over 100 Nolan Kingham getting loose for Texas. Rimmick does a nice job of snaring that one. That was almost buying behind the plate. And it's 2-0. and oh. Ball three. Got to take a couple here if you're Casey. Green light? <laughs> I'm taking a couple. <laughs> Ball four, and that should be the ball game. We'll see how they play it here. Run rule on the final day of a series, and that will do it. Texas has won the series as they win game three here today, 12 to two. And Greg, one of the things that you go back and look at this series, Texas offensively was by far the best it's been the entire year. Oh yeah. I mean Texas we talk about getting leadoff hitters on. We talk about getting the OPS the extra base hits. Texas did a good job of that. They had a good eye all weekend as well. Today a lot of walks took advantage of mistakes in this ball game but all weekend Texas swung the bats good and, and the extra base hits is, is the key. And let's talk about Ty Colbert a little bit. That's his seventh win. That'll be least after the weekend. We'll be leading the Big 12 again in total wins. He's really been the steady rock for this pitching staff. Oh, he year. has. I mean, we, we call him Mr. Steady because he goes out there. He's been most consistent pitcher on the Texas staff. He'll get a complete game for this. First complete game of the year for the Longhorns. So yeah, he's been outstanding. He, he battled today a little bit, but um, got his seventh win. He, he did good and, and got a series win for Texas, which is huge. Last point I want to make seven and five in the first half of conference play 12 conference games left. They've got to play better than that in the second half. There's no question but still they put themselves in position here at seven and five with a good second half. They can be right there. Yeah, they played well. They won a few series and. Looking good right now and we're going to the eyes of Texas. <laughs>